Hi y'all and welcome to another video with Mrs. D Math. We are going to be talking about understanding percents in this video, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about the first step in understanding percents. A percent is when you compare an amount to 100. And instead of writing it as a fraction, we're going to use the percent symbol. So for example, 40 over 100 is equal to 40%. So anytime we take that 100 denominator out of the equation, we're going to change that to a percent sign. So 40 over 100 represents 40%. And in the same way, 225 over 100 equals 225%. So any time that the numerator is greater than 100, then we're going to have a percent that's greater than 100. If your numerator is not greater than 100, then your percent will be less than 100. And this 100 represents the total of whatever we're talking about. So any time they talk about a percent, they're talking about how many out of 100. But what does this percent actually mean? So for the second step, the percentage represents the amount out of 100. We want to rewrite the fraction as a percent. So kind of the same thing we just talked about, but let's talk about a little bit more of the representation. So here we have a model, and we are talking about 0 to 1, which in percent represents 0% to 100%. So now using this model, let's go ahead and solve the problem. Remember our percent goes over 100. So if I change 1 fourth to an amount over 100, if I convert this, then I'm going to end up with my percent. So 4 goes into 100 25 times. So if I multiply 1 times 25, I get 25. And remember, when I have a number over 100, that number is the actual percent. So this would be 25%. Now, the bar here is just to help you understand the representation. So if I were to include all the way up to this point, this amount is half, and half of 100 is 50%. Then if I included this part, that would be another quarter, or 25%, so that's going to be 75%. So anytime you're looking at any sort of representation, number line, in this case we have a bar, then you can actually compare fractions, decimals, and percents all the same because this would also be the decimal 25 hundredths. This would be the fraction 1 half. This would be 3 fourths. So you can convert all percents, fractions, and decimals and they represent the same amount between 0 and 100, between 0 and 1. For the third step, we want to understand that many percentages are common and will become familiar. So let's look for patterns and relationships. So here we have one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, and five-fifths. Well, we know that five goes into 100, which is what we want our denominator to be in order to make a percent. 5 goes into 100 20 times, and 20 times 1 is 20. So that means that our percent here is 20%. Well, now, the denominators are all the same, so that means that I'm increasing by 20% every time. So here, 2 times 20 is 40%. 3 times 20 is 60%, 4 times 20 is 80%, and 5 times 20 is 100%. So anytime you have 
a pattern here where our denominators are all the same. That means our numerators are going to increase by the same amount every time as well. All right, let's try a few more practice problems. This is a pretty easy concept, but the hardest part is understanding what that percent represents. So here, if we say that half of the people want to get a cookie for lunch, then we are actually converting this to a percent, which means that out of 100 people, if I were to change this denominator to 100, if half of them want to get a cookie, well, two goes into 150 times, and 50 times one is 50. So that means that this would be 50%. Now, does this mean that only one out of two people want to get a cookie? Yes, but that means out of the total number of people. So if there were 500 people, that means that 250 of them would want to get a cookie because that is half of 200 and of 500. So anytime we're talking about 50%, that's just representing how many people out of 100, even if there are thousands of people that we're talking about. Let's try some more. 3 tenths. Well, we need to change this to 100. 10 goes into 100 10 times. 3 times 10 is 30. So that means that this would be 30%. Next we have 6 eighths. This one's a little more difficult because 8 does not go into 100 evenly. But let's talk about how we can do this. Because I still am talking about out of 100. So that means that my percent is actually going to end up having a decimal. So 8 into 100 it goes into 10 one time. I have 2 left over. 8 goes into 20 two times. I have 4 left over, but I need to continue here, so I have to add a decimal and bring down another 0, and 8 goes into 40 five times. So that means that 8 goes into 100 12 and a half times. So now I have to multiply 6 times 12 and a half. Five times six is 30, 12, 13, 14, 15, 75. Move my decimal two places to the left. So this one equals 75. There is another way we can do this to make it a lot easier instead of doing all the extra math. And the first thing you can do is look at this fraction and see if we can reduce it. Now, 6 and 8 are both even numbers, so if I reduce them both by dividing by 2, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times. Now, how many times does 4 go into 100? 25 times, and on top, 3 times 25 is 75, so we have 75%. So either way you do it, whether you take the long route and divide and multiply these big numbers, or you can reduce your fraction because 6 eighths and 3 fourths are equivalent, which means that 6 out of 8 people is the same representation as 3 out of 4 people, and in this case it's 75%. So just to put this into context, if we had 4 people in one class and 3 of them were girls, and we had eight people in another class, and six of them were girls, both classes are represented by girls at 75%. For our last one, we have six fifths. Now, this one's a little bit trickier too because my numerator is bigger than my denominator. So because my fraction is greater than one, that means my percent is gonna be greater than 100. But we still, want to change it to where our denominator is 100. 5 goes into 100 20 times. 6 times 20 is 120. So that means that this is going to end up being 
120%. So let's go ahead and recap our steps here. So first, a percent is when you compare an amount to 100. Instead of writing it as a fraction, you're gonna use a percent symbol. The percentage represents the amount out of 100. So we wanna rewrite the fraction as a percent. And third, many percentages are common and will become familiar. So you wanna look for patterns and relationships. So this was just a short lesson on understanding percents, but I do want you to understand that whenever people are doing surveys or telling you the percentage of something, they're not talking about an actual number. They're talking about the amount that represents the number out of 100. So if you have 75% off of an item in a store and they say everything is 75% off, you're not gonna take the same amount off of every price. You're gonna take 75% of the price. So it's all gonna be different. So that's why percentages are easier to make comparisons because you're putting everything on an equal plane where the denominator is, the, is 100. If you still need more help, you can watch this video a couple of times. Maybe doing the practice problems will help understand it a little bit better, but then be ready to ask some specific questions so that I can help you better. This is Mrs. D signing off on understanding percents. I hope you have a great day. Bye.